we're talking about the Argentine economy, because good news? That's right, they've gone from bouncing checks to bouncing back. Now, the Argentine economy has turned their lemons into lemonade and is now growing at faster rates than expected. Now, for some context, the last time this show covered Argentina, well, their economy was a unique tapestry of all sorts of tire fires, each one preventing another from being solved. You just defaulted on your foreign debt for the third time in 20 years, so nobody in their right mind is going to lend you any money. Which means that you're stuck spending only what you collect in taxes and printing money to fill in the gaps. Oh, but wait! Can't print too much money because you're facing 40% inflation. Printing money to fund the budget would, in this case, just be throwing fuel on that already raging fire. Unfortunately though, you're also dealing with a huge recession and uh, COVID, so not spending money is pretty much out of the question. Things were looking grim. Now, with that backdrop, how did Argentina manage to pull themselves out of that tailspin and get to higher than predicted growth? Well, it was a combination of fiscal policies, luck, and consumer confidence. First, the huge one a successful program that fought inflation. Now, much like all the best plans, this guy was three prongs get control of the monetary policy get control of the prices, and get control of the exchange rates. So first, the monetary policy, because you guys know how much I love talking about a good federal reserve. Now, After increasing money issuance in 2020 to pay for pandemic public spending, aka printing money, the central bank put an end to its monetary expansion. This cap on printing was accomplished in a very modern monetary theory way. Annual growth in the amount of money printed slowed to 39% from a high of 77%. Okay, so that whole end of monetary expansion plan sounds pretty provably false from that fact alone. Alright guys, last year we went a little crazy and printed 77% more cash than the previous year to pay for things. Well, don't worry, because we got our act together this year and only printed 39% more cash. So how can a Federal Reserve printing more money be reducing the monetary base? Simple, inflows and outflows. The central bank prints more money for the government to spend and then snatches it back by selling long-term IOUs to the public. The monetary institution absorbed 7% of the monetary base in February alone through issuing of central bank liquidity notes. Now to best explain what's going on here, Here's a little bit of a thought experiment for you guys. Now we've all heard that printing money leads to inflation, right? Well, what if the government were to say print a bunch of money and then immediately just lock it up in a safe where no one could touch it? That would not really impact inflation. Essentially, in this case, the government is attempting to do just that, except through the middleman of people. Here's 50 pesos hot off the press. If you lock it up here in our safe, we'll give you a great interest rate on it. Do the work we contracted you to do for that $50 and we'll keep your cash safe. Now, This strategy seems to have successfully sucked a fair amount of excess cash out of the economy, while allowing the government to still continue to print and spend money. We'll see what happens when that bill comes due though. Fourth default? Now, second, control the prices. Remember that the key symptom of inflation that we're talking about is an increase in the consumer price index. Take care of that and your currency might still be decreasing in value, but people tend to not care so much. Now, This strategy is a bit less of an economic solution and more of an iron fist strategy. The Fernandez administration is doubling the number of products included in its Precios Sayudadas scheme, which freezes the prices of items considered to be essential. Now, This policy is somewhat cheap and pretty easy to understand. Huh, so you're saying we have all the guns. You increase your prices and we drop the hammer. Now, This increased restriction isn't for all items, but rather concentrated to essentials. And lastly, Argentina's tinkering with the exchange rates. Now, this, in my opinion, is the most complicated of the three to explain, so I put off explaining it to the end. 
The idea here is something right out of one of those YouTube ads where you're just watching that five second timer like a hawk waiting for it to run out. If you want your currency to be worth more money, well step one is to believe it's more money. It's all in the mind. The Argentine government has instituted a crawling peg, meaning that they're largely ignoring the market value for pesos and setting their exchange rates. Oh, okay, well the free market says one peso is worth ten dollars. You know what? We want you to value our pesos more, so for you? Well, I'll give you twelve bucks for it instead. That's two extra dollars per peso on us, the federal government, because we want you to value our currency. Now, as you can imagine, these policies come with a whole novel's worth of fine print. The only people who really have access to these screaming good dollar deals are importers who need to pay for things with dollars and small monthly savings conversions. Now, because of that, this largely functions as a state subsidy for imports. Now, that might not sound smart, but if your goal is to keep prices down and fight inflation, subsidizing imports is an important economic way of doing so, and it's gonna help. Because of these three efforts, locking cash in a vault, locking in prices, and paying a little extra in currency exchanges, the peso lost 1.1% of its value against the US dollar in June, which is actually a pretty big victory. That's the smallest drop since January 2020. Now, critics are quick to point out that none of these actions actually solve the underlying inflation problem. But rather, they more hit the snooze button and continuously increase the chasm between real values and these artificial values as long as these programs are in place. Still, with fires burning everywhere, this one inflation problem has successfully been subdued to give the government a little bit of breathing room. Of course, you can't have higher than expected recoveries simply by fighting inflation. You gotta get those transactions going. The next factor in Argentina's better than predicted recovery is just a whole bunch of luck. Argentina's exports are more than half agricultural, meaning that growth is largely determined by weather patterns. The biggest influence you can have here is hoping that you pick the right god and hoping that it's not a book of Job type situation. Now, a USDA report looking into Argentinian crops confirmed that all of the stars were aligned this year and next year, and it's going to be bumper crop after bumper crop, with record setting wheat production. Now, on a graph, that's an explosion of new sales bringing in outside cash that doesn't need to be provided by the government. Yay! The last major piece of this puzzle is consumer confidence and people just spending a lot of the money they have. Hey guys, prices are being kept in check right now. You got all that cash from selling wheat to China burning a hole in your pocket. Why don't you treat yourself? A month long strict lockdown in May was eased significantly in June, triggering an unexpectedly large amount of consumption. As Goldman Sachs put it in a recent regional analysis report, the robust growth reflected very strong sequential growth in investment spending, a sharp increase in net exports, and a solid growth in both private and public consumption. It's really exciting because revised estimates now see Argentina growing at 7% this year and 4.5% in 2022. Basically, there's a lot more room for hope now than there was at the conclusion of my previous episode. Link at the end. Still, if you watch that episode, there is a cautionary tale to be heard. In the modern financial history of Argentina, none of this stuff is new, and very specifically so. We've already seen the currency pegs, printing money to finance the budget because you can't get loans because you defaulted on other loans, and a bunch of other repeated tips and tricks. We all have deja vu. These stopgap measures tend to remain in place until the government is taking truly desperate measures to keep everything together, at which point a conservative gets elected, just tears all of that down, takes on a bunch of debt because investors like the cut of his jib, and ends up defaulting on that debt a few years later when crops inevitably have an eventual bad season. Here's hoping that history does not repeat itself in this case, because it seems like there's quite the opportunity for something new to emerge here. 
until something else does happen. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about how Argentina got into this desperate state, here's the video I mentioned earlier. Also thank you so much to all my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, link in the description. Like, subscribe, do all that other fun YouTube stuff, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.